Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm very excited to announce that I will be officially replacing the god-awful infotainment system that's supplied with this Audi R8. This is one of the things that bugged me the most when first getting my car, because even though this model is 2014, it comes with a infotainment system that's in the prehistoric ages, like in the early 2000s. The stock infotainment system on this car does not have Bluetooth, doesn't have Bluetooth audio, doesn't have CarPlay, none of the new things you would expect from a supercar. So I've always wanted to replace it with some aftermarket system, but until now, there hasn't been a good plug and play solution. So when this particular infotainment system came out and I became aware of it, it really intrigued me because it's supposed to be pure plug and play. You just put it in, easy like five minute install, and everything's supposed to work like the backup camera is supposed to work. You get wireless car play, Bluetooth audio, all of these things you would find in a newer car, you're able to get. It looks pretty stock to me. I'll show you guys what it looks like. I just opened the package today, and as you can see, it looks pretty similar to the stock Audi infotainment system. You got the buttons at the bottom. You have an R8 logo here. It looks really good. And I don't think a person just who didn't know that I got this would think that I replaced it with an aftermarket system, which I really like. It also has a bigger screen than the default infotainment system. I guess I'll show you guys right now what the default looks like. Um, for those of you who don't own R8, you might want to see what I'm dealing with right now. It, it really sucks. Let me just show you guys right now. Hey guys, so this is what my current setup looks like. Because this car doesn't have Bluetooth audio, I've installed a receiver here that attaches to the aux in port. And you can see that this is in the uh, center glove box here. Um, there's an aux in port right here, which plugged in. And then there has to be external battery source as well for this. So in the uh, passenger glove box here, there is a power supply that charges this receiver a lot of wiring and then obviously you need navigation which uh, I have to put my phone here so there has to be a mount installed in the air vents. In general a lot of wiring uh, it just looks too cluttered and hopefully with this new infotainment system I won't need any of this uh, so it'll make my car look a lot cleaner. And I'll show you what this stock infotainment system looks like it's so outdated look at this guys. It's like literally from the dinosaur ages. Um, no Bluetooth audio. Basically like I leave it on one screen at all times and that's the uh, this screen. External audio source is active. Like literally that's all you see because I'm using the aux in port at all times. So this is stuck on this screen basically for the entire duration of when I drive. Looks really stupid. Would be much better with CarPlay. And also the screen is so small. Like it's literally the it's probably smaller than my phone, my iPhone 12 Pro Max, let's see. Yeah, you can see there, it's this actual screen size. It's like basically the same as an iPhone. So there's no reason why you would use this over like an iPhone 12 Pro Max. Um, and with the new screen, it's supposed to be eight inches. So it's like a lot bigger, it's supposed to cover this entire area. So I'm really excited to get this thing installed. It's supposed to be easy, like a five minute install. I'm hoping it's easy and everything just works. But uh, I'll show you guys how the install goes and let you guys know if it's worth it. Okay, so let's do an unboxing. So I have two hands here for you guys to see. Um, so first you have the infotainment system, obviously in the box. This is what it looks like. And then you have all the wires that come with it. Hopefully I can figure out which wires plug into which ports. Yeah, a lot of wiring in here. I hope that they provide the locks to remove the current infotainment system because there's supposed to be special keys that help you pull that out. I don't see it in this box though, so maybe I'll have to buy those myself. So there's no instructions provided in the box here, which is a little disappointing. Okay guys, so apparently I need double DIN removal keys. I need four of them to actually remove this infotainment system here. So it'll be a while until I can actually remove this and install it. I thought it would come with the infotainment system, but unfortunately they don't provide it. Uh, so I'll have to get it somewhere else, maybe off of Amazon. I'll report back when I can actually remove this. Hey guys, it's two days later. I just got back from the Audi dealership. Had to put a special order for the special keys that unlock the DIN over here. Luckily this wasn't too expensive. It's was only 14 bucks. I would have thought Audi would have tried to price gouge this. 
but luckily these things don't cost too much so you should order them officially from the Audi dealership if you're planning to make this change. So it's getting kind of dark. So I'm gonna try to finish the entire install within like 30 minutes to an hour or so. We'll see how it goes. So it's supposed to be pretty simple. Each four of these keys go into a slot on these four corners and you're supposed to be able to pull them out. I can't use one hand and do this, so I'll get back to you guys once I finish this. All right, it's the next day guys. And unfortunately I couldn't get it working yesterday. It took me an hour to figure out that these keys don't work even though they're OEM. Look at this, the top two, they fit in fine, but these bottom two, like they don't go in far enough. And it actually damaged my trim because these keys come like with sharp edges and it's like curved. So I had to bend them a little bit to actually go in. But even then it doesn't fit all the way in. I actually found out that this is a common problem for people trying to remove their infotainment system. And you actually have to get third party ones. The OEM ones from Audi aren't that great. So today we're at O'Reilly Auto Parts. I bought some third party ones. And hopefully I can get this working. I hope, I really hope so. All right, so I just got these um, from O'Reilly Auto Parts. This better work or else I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, wish me luck. So we'll remove these two. The top two are working. So I'll leave them in. Oh, you see that's a lot longer, right? You see these are pretty short. These ones are a lot longer, so it should have a lot more leverage. Let's see. Okay, there, that clicked in pretty well. And we'll see here. All right, clicked in, so should be able to remove it now. Uh-oh, doesn't feel like it's coming out. Okay guys, I managed to get the infotainment out, but I had some help. Okay, so the keys were the right keys. They fit and they worked fine now, but I had trouble pulling it out. It just wasn't pulling out. And I went to a shop to get it done. I mean, apparently you needed extra tools. You need like a panel snapper. So I paid 50 bucks for that. For all of you out there watching, just go to a shop, get it professionally done. Don't go and buy keys like me and waste like, I already wasted like $40 getting these keys. And I could just went to the shop getting get it done for 50 bucks. Yeah, this is what it looks like now. I'm going to pull that out and try to install a new infotainment system. Hopefully everything goes smoothly now and there's no other hiccups. Okay guys, I've just disconnected the current infotainment system. This was pretty easy. There's only three plugs in. Pretty straightforward and disconnecting all of this. And now let's, uh, let's add the new infotainment in. We just connected uh, most of the stuff and uh, getting the first startup on this new infotainment system. Pretty excited. I think there still needs to be a rerouting for the backup camera. Let's see if the music's working. It works. The sound works. Nice. So I tested mostly everything and it works pretty well. Still need to test CarPlay, but first let's get the backup camera working. You actually have to reroute the backup camera processing unit. So I've removed the cover behind the seat here. You just use a pry tool like this. There's uh, clips on top, pry it off, and then there's suction cups at the bottom, and you just pull it off. It's a pretty easy task. So now we're gonna reattach the uh, video module for the backup camera, which is this thing right here. Attach it to the new head unit, and then it should work. So let's get that a try. So all we need to do is pull this one out. Doing this with one hand is pretty tough. Okay, there we go. All right, so I've attached the uh, camera module here, and you're supposed to reroute this to the head unit through the center console, which is gonna be kind of tough. Okay, I think I found a way to route the backup camera wires. Uh, of the footrest on the passenger side, you reveal some small compartment over here. You can route the backup camera wire up to the head unit control space, and then you would uh, hide this cable along the trim under here. So this way you don't have to remove um, much of the center console. If you wanna to get to the center console directly it's a lot more work so i'm just hiding the wire here so it's easier to uh install this thing but this should be it and we should be uh fully functional after this okay guys i think i've been finished installing everything and it's working i'm kind of scared to push it in all the way just because it doesn't look like this this can be taken out like there's no slots to really use the keys to pull it out on this one I'm not sure, I just contacted the manufacturer and see if like you can actually remove this. So I'm just trying to test everything before I kind of finalize this. But it seems like everything's working. Um, let me show you guys. Let's just start the car right now and I'll show you the boot up time. So about like a few seconds, 
Um, I'll show you guys how you get the CarPlay. So you go to the app list first, and let me close the door so it doesn't show this indicator. Okay, there we go. Okay, so it just didn't launch properly. Okay, so there you have it. You see Apple CarPlay, you got Spotify. So very, very cool. It's a good touch screen, very responsive. It's pretty clear actually. The resolution is, I think, 720p, but you don't notice it too much because you're usually looking at it pretty from pretty far away. So the pixel density doesn't matter as much. I think this is pretty HD. It doesn't need to be like 1080p to look good. All right, um, and then I'll show you guys the reverse. I got this backup camera working, rerouted it. So you put it in a reverse and there you go. You have a nice uh, view of this. This is way better than the stock screen because like the viewing angles on a stock screen is really bad. So in these backup situations, you wouldn't be able to say anything, but this is great. Even though the camera quality isn't that good, you can still basically see your surroundings with this. So let me give you guys a full Apple CarPlay demonstration from boot up to start and show you guys how long it takes to start up. So just turn on the car there. It's about 10 seconds to booting up the screen. There we go. And now Apple CarPlay should get started pretty soon. There we go. So about eight seconds or so until the Apple CarPlay starts booting up. And then there's a boot up time, so you wait for it. There we go. So overall, I would say 25 seconds to start up Apple CarPlay from starting up your car. It is still a little bit laggy, but you know, I think this is a great solution. I still really love it. One thing I really like about it is um, the steering wheel control. So they are retained with this infotainment system. So let's go to Spotify here, um, just show you guys. So from the steering wheel, I can control the volume and you see volume is going up, volume is going down as I turn the steering wheel function. And what's also cool is uh, you're able to move forward one song and move back one song with this steering wheel control. So let's say I was on a certain song. Let's say this song. I'm not going to play it just because uh, copyright reasons. Uh, as you can see here, I'm turning my steering wheel slider here and it's changing the song. That's super cool. I mean, I always had to change up the song by pressing a physical button or um, using that Bluetooth device that I used to have for playing music, but this is just so much more convenient. I'm, I'm loving this. I can't wait to go on long drives with this and having Apple CarPlay here and then having my songs right at my fingertips, having volume controls. Oh man, this is great. I'm, I'm loving this. I think the infotainment system was holding me back from keeping this car for a long time because just so old. I wanted to switch to a newer car, maybe like a Uricon or the newer Audi R8, just something that has more technology, more modern technology. But now that I have this infotainment system, I think I might keep this for a longer time, maybe one or two more years even. Yeah, we'll see. I'm really loving this so far. I'll let you guys know how it goes, if there's any problems with this. All right, guys, that's the video. Me installing the new infotainment system that I got. And this is very great for the Audi R8. It's very specialized. All of the right adapters came in and it was just plug and play, except for the backup camera, which you do need to route through behind the seats. Um, I think there's extra work if you have a manual. I heard you need to do some tapping into the wire and like rerouting the power if you have a manual transmission. But other than that, if you have a automatic transmission, it'll work fine in this car. Let me know if you have any questions down below. I'll be using this infotainment system for the next week, like pretty extensively. So leave that in the comments down below if you have any questions about it. Make sure to ping my Instagram if you wanna get one of these head units. I'll be link you directly to the manufacturer. That's it, thank you for watching uh, and I'll see you guys next time.